Welcome to Blank Tape. I'm Kurt. And I'm Anson. And this is Volume 2, Track 15, Sweet Victory. Recorded on Thursday, February 7th, 2019. Put on your headphones and let's jam. All right. Happy Valentine's Day, if all goes according to plan. Yes. Uh, then today is Cupid's Day and hearts are flying through the air. Yes, the feast of St. Valentine. That is correct. Is there actually a St. Valentine? Yeah, actually, I think there's like two of them, so, yeah. Oh. Yeah, but uh, I think the story goes as, uh, you know, a monk that, uh, you know, or a deacon or something that officiated weddings for people in the Roman Empire when it was against the law to worship the Christian God, you know, all that good stuff, and then was beheaded, you know, as a, as a, as martyrs and saints be doing, so. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right well what are you drinking tonight coke from schlotsky's or dr or what? pepper from schlotsky's all right all right i just have my big old uh 40 ounce water container here nice uh, yeah so i got nothing too a, exciting i got a 12 pack of uh the shiner schmores uh that is waiting in the fridge for me because i saw it at uh, the store, and I was like, "Well, this is the last one. It means I have to take it home." So, were you were you having that last time, or was that something different? No, no, no. It was Shiner S'mores. That's what I was drinking uh, when we were interviewing Heather. Okay, yeah, that's, I thought it sounded familiar. Yeah. Yep. So just drinking regular old soda tonight. The dr- the soda drink of Texas, found at your local Schlotzky's and Whataburger. <laughs> uh, I was gonna make a joke about about sponsorship, but I don't know how to put it together. Nah, uh, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh, did we do our homework? Is the big question. Um, and. I did not watch any movies. However, I went to a friend's house and he had a very cool uh, Tron poster from. It could have been a reprint for all I know, but it was like a a, a poster of Tron from the original movie, so that was pretty cool. Oh, uh, adjacent, yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. He also had some uh, some uh, vinyl records of the soundtrack to Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, wow. uh, like framed, which were pretty cool. Yeah. So, super big nerd. Framed um, and autographed, or just framed? No, just framed, yeah. Oh, okay. So... I mean, he would that's... have increased in cool points if it was framed and autographed. <laughs> well, he's he is pretty cool. He has a, a whole case full of uh, figurines and stuff in his living room, so... Oh, wow. Shout out to Dan and Autumn for being pretty cool. Uh, so is it kind of like a display like Steve Carell had in the movie The 40-Year-Old Virgin where he has like them all on display at the beginning of the movie? The last time that I saw that movie was when we watched it together, which was <laughs> at least five years ago. So wow. <laughs> I don't know. Had to revisit yeah. that one. Early Steve Carell, man, before The yeah. Office happened. That was before The Office? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, because uh, that came out when we were, or it may have been at the same time, but it was like early Steve Carell before people were like, oh, we know him as Gru, and we know him as, uh, you know, I guess he's going to be in this upcoming Netflix show for uh, for them called Space Force. So I guess it's oh. going to be like The Office, but set in space, apparently, is what I'm hearing. Oh, I'll have to check it out. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> what about you and your homework? Did you do any coding? Nope. Have done zero coding. <laughs> I've thought about it, so maybe that counts. But uh, in spirit, you were you're coding in spirit. <laughs> well, hey. Uh, well, I started. I finally got to start playing Fallout seventy six. So I've been hacking some terminals. So as you do in Fallout. So that's about right, as that's right. about as close as I've gotten. Well, you can hack terminals IRL if you go through Code Academy. That's and true. Learn learn some Ruby scripting. Oh, but, uh, oh, you you've never played Fallout, any of the Fallout games, have you? I think I watched you play one of them one time. Okay, because you would find it. You'd probably find it super hilarious the way the hacking mechanic works. 
Because it'll, it'll, you know, the the screens look like they're nineteen eighties Macintoshes, and you know the, the the loud clickety clack of the keyboard as you move your cursor or indicator of where you're looking on the computer. But it's sure. just a jarble of like symbols, and then you'll find words spread throughout that are supposed to be the password, and it gives you so many tries. But you can go through all like the random characters and find these uh, brackets or these. Uh, junk values or something that if you select it it'll either like reset the number of tries you have to hack it or it'll remove a dummy dud value of a password but i think Good. there i think there was a big thing a couple years ago or something where someone was sharing a story about oh the russians are hacking the american election and they used like an image from a fallout hacking mechanic they like, how it uh <laughs> how apparently that's how hacking works in the real world <laughs> well uh it sounds it sounds kind of interesting there was a uh there was a vulnerability called heartbleed a while ago which was maybe a couple of years ago now i have to look it up when it was but uh there was uh, an issue where if you responded if you made a certain request to a server it would give you back kind of like a memory dump and the memory would include like plain text passwords and things like that, kind of like you're saying. So, mm-hmm. um, if what I'm if what I'm picturing in my mind is similar to to that, then it might be sort of accurate in spirit, maybe. Oh, kind of, okay. But, uh, you know, yeah, because yeah. I because so. yeah, obviously, yeah, it's not like you're looking into the matrix uh, in this thing, mm-hmm. but I, but what you're describing, it kind of sounds like that, like. You know, because it always does a thing like where you click, 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 and then the screen changes, and it's like, oh, here's a bunch of random stuff. So maybe it is based in reality on how they figured out that mechanic. And I think that only started coming together in the third Fallout game. So Fallout 3, New Vegas, Fallout 4, and now uh, Fallout 76 use this hacking mechanic. It may have been, it may have been different in the original Fallout and Fallout 2. You know, once, okay. but that once. Uh, Bethesda or whoever the Xena Xena Media or one of these game companies that took over the franchise from the original creators of the game. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. Corrections. I don't think there was any corrections. Not that I could think of. Right. I mean, it was, we pretty much just let Heather run the show pretty much. And uh, I couldn't find any inaccuracies. I mean, she is a pretty reliable source of information. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a uh, reliable narrator. Uh, exactly. Right. So, news tidbit of the week. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you want to do yours first? Sure. Hey, blank generation, we have a Patreon page. Hooray! So, <laughs> that means that we have, like, you know, three tiers of membership and uh, and patronage. And you can donate at like the one, the three, or the five dollar level, and based on that, um, you'll get different cool rewards. Like if you just give us a dollar, like in all of our future episodes ongoing, like you'll get a shout out from us every every show that we do. Um, if you donate like at the three dollar level, um, you will get an exclusive uh, bonus episode only to three dollar level patrons and you obviously every reward level you go up you get the previous level too so you'll still get a shout out as well um but you'll get like an exclusive bonus episode where you'll get to ask like a question or something and that's what we'll talk about in the bonus episode and you'll get to do that like every month and then if you donate at like the five dollar level you get not only the previous stuff, but you get to give us homework. You you like suggest like a movie or an album that we have to listen to or watch, and then we can talk about it on a future episode and stuff. So that's what we have figured out right now. Um, so I mean, if if you all are so generous and give us way more money than we're expecting, then maybe we can add something crazy like I don't know, like we compose an opera or we. <laughs> We do like a our own convention, or we uh, I don't know. We do like a live show and rent out a theater. I don't know something fun like that. That's like if we got like crazy amounts of money. Yeah. So far, yeah. no patrons, no money coming in. But hopefully, now that you know in this episode that the Patreon's live, uh, then maybe you'll become our patrons and help us out, make cool, help us make cool stuff. Yeah, those are some pretty sweet rewards you got planned. So I like the sound of that. 
Yeah, and it's it's inexpensive, I'd say. Like even at a dollar level, like that's twelve bucks a year to just get your name shouted out on the air on every episode that we do. So I mean mm-hmm. it's a pretty smart investment if I say so myself. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other topics you wanted to talk about for your news? Oh, uh, it was kind of funny last week on last week, Thursday at the time of this recording. So that would have been uh, January something, right? January 31st. Right. Because the first was on Friday. So, um, yeah, there was like a hiccup with the Microsoft servers. Uh, I'm at work and Casey texts me and says, the Xbox isn't working and went on Twitter and everyone was freaking out, but um, they were able to fix it or something. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, that was a little funny little hiccup. Uh, and I guess that happens from time to time. You know, servers get overloaded or I guess they have to do maintenance on them. And, but then maybe they forget to tell everybody. So then when your wife is trying to play video games, she freaks out when she can't play her video games. All I have to do is turn it off and on again, and then it goes back to normal. So Ah. <laughs> you ever watch the IT crowd, the TV show? Yes, I did. Yes, we both we watched uh, both seasons and uh, I guess that finale episode. Yeah, we quite enjoyed it. Moz and uh, uh, what was uh, his character? I can't remember the Irishman. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I've only watched like maybe half of the first season or so. Um, I liked it. It was pretty funny, but I just never got around to finishing it. So okay. Uh, anyway. News tidbit for me. Um, I guess I will go with something that happened um, earlier this week, I think. Um, ah. So, let's see. Where to start? Well, we talk, we've talked about app surveillance and stuff like that before. Um, mm-hmm. And Apple's, basic, a- Apple's rules with the App Store and stuff. And uh, basically, Facebook got in trouble for an app that they had. Um, and so... When you're a developer, like an Apple developer, um, right. Apple only lets certain software run on the iPhone. And so the way they control that is through something called a certificate and then code signing. So you submit your code to Apple, and then they, they sign it, and they say this code is verified as from an official Apple developer, and it is approved to run on you know iPhone or whatever. Um, okay. And... That's to do it so you can't just put any random thing on your iPhone unless you, like, jailbreak it. Um, and it's better for security, and so Apple kind of makes sure their platform stays safe and everything, and that's how they kind of, like, that's how they control what goes on their phone, on their on their platform. Um, so, okay. Uh, let's see. So, if you have an app, though, that you don't want to be available to the larger public, but you want to be used inside of your company, such mm-hmm. as, like, the example was Facebook had an app for their, their employees to, like, order food from the cafeteria or something like that, you know. Um, something that you want to distribute to a large number of people, but not, like, in the App Store. Um, you can use what's called an enterprise certificate, which is something Apple will give you. Um, and it's for, they tell you specifically, you're only supposed to use it if you're signing these enterprise apps for internal use, like, inside your company only. You're not supposed to use it for distributing anything to customers. Um, mm-hmm. And at the company that I work for, we don't have any enterprise apps. I think we use some, we might use it for beta testing, um, like for our beta builds of our actual app, but we don't have any like specific apps. Like, you know, we don't have a cafeteria app or anything crazy like that. Or, like, and a you don't have app a, or anything. you don't have like a Klingon or a Starfleet app as well. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so anyway, so, that's the story. That's what an enterprise certificate is. And what happened was, I, I can't remember exactly when the first time this happened was, but Facebook had some app in the store, in the app, actual app store, that was a said it was a VPN service. And a VPN is a virtual private network. And what that means is that if you want to obfuscate your IP from the websites or servers you're connecting to, what you can do is sign up for a VPN. And mm. it basically redirects all your traffic through this other other computer or other server. So it kind of masks where you are. Um, it's right. good for privacy. Or if you're in a country, if you're like in China or something where they have like internet censorship, you can use a VPN to appear to be not in China or something like that, you know? Um, 
So there's different ways you can you can use it for like domain filtering or ad filtering even ad blocking uh, or like privacy reasons. Um, and it's great if you trust the company who's running it. But the issue is the company who's running the VPN gets to see basically all of your internet traffic. Um, and so if that's somebody who is interested in maybe selling ads or selling your internet browsing data, um, you probably wouldn't want to use a VPN from them. Um, mm-hmm. And so, what's what? Where the story is, the place this is, the place this story is going is that Facebook had this research, this quote unquote research app that was um, a VPN app, but it was like taking all these customers, uh, everyone who was using it, it was taking their data and using it for like ad analytics and stuff. I think, um, or like tracking that people didn't really agree to or was unclear. And so, Apple got mad and like pulled it from the App Store and said, "You're not allowed to have this app on the App Store anymore." Oh okay. dang. But then, Lame what the law was, yeah, but what happened earlier this week is that Facebook was like, well, we want this app to be used because we want this ad data. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it an enterprise app instead and distribute it to outside customers using our enterprise certificate, which is against the rules of what you're supposed to do with an enterprise certificate. Bum, so, bum, bum. Somebody found out that Facebook's uh, VPN, like privacy invading tracking app was being distributed outside the app store uh, against like Apple's wishes basically. And Facebook got their entire enterprise certificate revoked. And so all enterprise apps that were from Facebook immediately stopped working earlier this week when Apple pulled their certificate. So if you had it on your phone, you couldn't even launch it. Uh, so this is like their company directory and their like cafeteria food ordering stuff. <laughs> so um, Zuckerberg zucked himself. Yeah. Zucks to Zuck, as they say. Um, <laughs> so he got in trouble. They got in trouble for that. And Google also had gotten in trouble, too, because they were kind of doing something similar with an enterprise app to outside outside uh, people. Um, and so oh man. they both got their certificates revoked. But uh, I think Google was in talks to get it back and up and running. And they might even have it back running now. But uh, Facebook, I don't know. They're they're in, they're in more in trouble than uh, than Google was. So it's kind of a interesting power dynamic and... Wow. Thing going on there, so we'll see what happens. But Facebook, man, I uh, thought Google was better behaved than that. Yeah, well, they're both ad companies, so they both want to like sell ads. You know, they all want—they're all about tracking, tracking user behavior, so they can sell targeted ads. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes you wonder all the all of our peers and uh, and stuff like that that are like, all right, well, I'm done with social media, and uh, you know, they decide to well, whether it's actually physically deleting an app from your phone or just like, you know, act, actually deactivating your account if it's uh, saving them all headaches. Um, but I guess even on a desktop computer or laptop computer, whichever search engine you use, it's still going to try and target ads at you based on what you're searching. So There's one that I like that's called uh, DuckDuckGo, as in DuckDuckGoose, but no goose, just go. <laughs> um it's a really nice search engine and uh, they are kind of a privacy conscious search engine. So they say they don't track you or anything and they have some useful features that Google doesn't have. Um, So you can do things like if you're going to search, if you want to search Wikipedia really quickly, you can type um, exclamation mark W and then your Wikipedia search. And instead of like going to Wikipedia first and then searching, it'll just search directly Wikipedia for you immediately. So it's kind of a nice little, they have some cool features. Um, oh, okay. So you should check, you should, you should check out that, that search engine uh, if you want to <laughs> at some point. Um, yeah, I might have to. Although, I mean, I guess I, I haven't run into too many problems with our Google overlords, but um, <laughs> you never know. One day the machines could rise up and turn against me. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And let's see, uh, has the uh, D&D game started yet that you got invited to? Has Anson's Adventure begun? So I had to excuse myself from the adventure. Uh, ah. I had to drop out. I didn't even, I barely had time to like catch up with anything. And they were in a group and they were, you know, some of them had already made their character sheets. And they were already talking about like when to schedule the first meeting and stuff. And I was like, man, I just don't have, I don't have time for this. And I don't want to be a burden. Um, so I said that they invited me to be a substitute if somebody is sick or something and I need someone to drop in. But, uh, I have unfortunately, <laughs> uh, excused myself from 
that one. So I'm kind oh, of bummed man. about it, but I just didn't have time to to do that regularly. So what do we have to do to make time? Do we have to like build a robot to do all your work, so then that way you free up um, time? Is that what we got to do? I don't know. I mean, I have too many. I have hobbies, you know. I, I go to the gym. I do the podcast. I hang out with my wife, and that's that's all I have time for, you know. So it's yeah, it, it happens. But you get you got to go to the gym with your wife and play D and D while you do a podcast, and then you're combining all your activities into one. <laughs> I'll do push ups <laughs> while I'm recording the podcast and playing D and D with my wife. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Well, all right, um, so let's see. Our mini topic, uh, since we started the podcast, you turned me on to this lettered box. D- mm-hmm. Is it just letterbox or letterbox D, or how is it technically pronounced? Uh, I, I would usually just say letterboxed because uh, when you're talking about a um, when you're talking about a widescreen film image that's being played on a four by three TV, like a square TV. Um, yeah, it's called letterboxing. The effect where you have the black bars on top and bottom. Uh, oh right. So I think it's a like a play on words. I that. see. Okay. Well, since we both, since I was encouraged to start using letterboxed, mm-hmm. I uh, you know we we uh, got to the through the new year, and uh, the service we uh, I mean I guess we're both using it for free, and even on a free account. They will do like a, a year in review of all the movies you watched, and so we decided that hey, we should look at our um, our 2018 letterboxed review and mm-hmm. see what our stats were for the year. And so, what were your what were your uh, movie watching stats for 2018? So I know they sent an email about it, and I couldn't. I looked. I was trying to look it up earlier today. I just couldn't find it. I have no idea like where it went. Um, and I was trying to look online. And I couldn't see it, but um, I was able to do some filtering and searching. And I remembered the guy who I was the most watched actor. So uh, oh, okay. my stats. My stats are 54 films logged during 2018. Okay. Which is uh, what is that like? I months? mean, that's like that's, week, that's like a movie a week. Yeah, that's yeah. what average is out to. Yeah. Okay. 54 films logged. It said 52 films reviewed. I don't think something adds up there because I know I, d- I didn't review more than two films. Uh, but maybe it's counting old reviews or something too. I don't know. Um, so Maybe. 50, yeah, 54 logs for sure. Um, mm-hmm. My most watched actor is this guy named Jim Cummings. And... It's kind of funny because I did not recognize him at all. I was like, who is this guy? The voice I've of Winnie s- the Pooh. He's a voice actor. S- <laughs> yeah, so I didn't know that, but uh, he is indeed a voice actor. Who oh, uh, bother Eeyore? <laughs> so I'm trying to like scroll through his credits and like see what I watched that he is in that I like know I saw. Tigger. He's definitely the voice of Tigger and Winnie the Pooh. Um, okay, Secret Life of Pets is in there. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, like he's most known for being a voice actor. Mm-hmm. Um, probably a lot of the Disney television shows, even the cartoon shows we would have watched growing up, most likely have been voiced by this gentleman here. Oh, even he in some in... of our favorite video games, too. He was a narrator in The Legend of Korra, too. I didn't know that. Oh, there That's you go. Pretty cool. Yeah. Additional voices in Wreck It Ralph. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So. So he was my most watched actor as <laughs> his voice actor. Um, hey, he's a he's a good choice. So I, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't remember who my most watched director was. I just I lost that. But um, actually, uh, if you have a second, let me check my check my thing again. I think I remember seeing that actually in my history, and I was like, I don't know who that guy is. David <laughs> Green. David Gordon Reed. Okay. Green. He did Oh, Green. Halloween. He did the Halloween that came out this year, 2018 or last year, oh. I guess. Okay. And did he also do the old one? No. How no, the the, the old one the, the old one was John Carpenter, dude, back yeah. in 78? Question mark? That yeah. was like Jamie that was like Jamie Lee Curtis one of her uh, first movies, I think. Oh, gosh. He also did Pineapple Express, and I watched that again in 2018. <laughs> All I want to do is pew, 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 and a ching. 
and take your money. Yep. So that's probably why he's my most watched director because I watched those two movies. <laughs> okay. All right. All hey, right. I remember your review. You were like, "Uh, such a stoner baked movie. I'll never watch it again." <laughs> it's hilarious. I just didn't think it was that funny. Anyway. So, oh. Well, well my... it's because you weren't under the influence. That's why it wasn't funny to you. Mm, that's true, I guess. But if it's if you have to be high to think it's funny, then it's not intrinsically funny. So that's my Science. that's my review. Science bomb dropped. I had no films that I rated five stars, but I had a few Whoa. that I rated four point five stars, and okay. those were Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, mm. Bohemian Rhapsody, oh. Incredibles Two, mm. Unsane, The host, mm. uh, Hostiles, Black mm. Panther, and Coco. Um, oh yeah, I know we talked about Unsane because that's with one with Claire Foy in it. Um, yes, that was like one of the I first remember. ones we talked about. Mm. Correct. Yeah, you were telling me how you enjoyed that uh, enjoyed that film. Yes, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, that one right. was good. Hostiles was also very good. It was uh, uh, what's his name? Christian Bale was in it. It's the Civil War movie, right? Civil War, or it's Indians? It's a uh, or or post Civil War. Americans. Yeah, it's um. Gosh, I forget the exact story of it, but. Um, the, the story is something like Christian Bale or somebody is like escorting a Native American back to his, his homeland or something. And uh, okay, it's very, it's, it's very moving and very well done. And I just, I like Christian Bale and anything. So of uh, course, yeah. well, you've seen him in Newsies, right? I have not. Okay. Well, the original Disney movie that precedes the Broadway musical that has Christian Bale in the actual movie musical from like 92, 94. Okay, let me open that up and put it on my letterbox. <laughs> or, since I'm using DuckDuckGo, what I can type is exclamation, park, exclamation mark LTR space news IEs, newsies. I yep. hit enter and it automatically searches letterbox for that movie. There Sweet. It is. 1992, yeah. Christian Bale. Woohoo! I was, I got it. Sweet. Let me log in and save that. Well, while you are doing that, I suppose I'll go ahead and read off my movie stats. I feel like uh, a baseball yeah. player r- r- rattling off his stats. So even though I started in probably May, um, according to this, it says that I logged 99 films since right May on. to December. Of those, I only reviewed 25. Okay. Okay. And when I calculated out how many hours that was, or I actually got the email, so it gave me all these stats. So it said that it, it, (laughs) it said that I had watched 177 hours worth of movies, or if you break it down, of my entire 365 days that I had available in 2018, seven days, nine hours, and approximately 35 minutes of that time was just spent watching movies. So it's like I took a week, out of, a little over a week in the year just to do all my movie watching, which is kind of cool. Nonstop. Um, <laughs> not, yeah, that would be nonstop, pause to go to the bathroom, all that, yep. Yeah. Um, let's see. Most watched actor was Andy Serkis, and I figured this because it had to have been... Uh, Last Jedi, uh, Black Panther, and then at Christmas, uh, we ended up doing a Lord of the Rings uh, marathon uh, right at Christmas. So that was, you know, five Andy Serkis movies uh, in that year. And the most watched director ended up becoming Peter Jackson, namely because of the uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, highest rated movies, uh, all of them were fives, uh, but the ones that the email pointed out to me uh, were Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, uh, Lord of the Rings Return of the King, and Lord of the Rings The Two Towers. Um, I went through it and looked at my list, and quite a number of the movies uh, that were logged uh, were repeat viewings. Like, for instance, I noted Deadpool 2, Incredibles 2, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Infinity War and Hassan Minhaj Homecoming King uh, were viewed multiple times in 2018. And technically one or two of the movies that I added in 2018, I didn't actually fully watch. So in all spirit of honesty, they might 
they probably shouldn't have fully counted. Mm. Um, Fist Fight and Battle of the Sexes were those two movies. Um, and then I added a comment saying, even though the lettered box boxed thinks that uh, Andy Serkis is my most watched actor, I think Deadpool is actually my most watched actor since I I saw Deadpool 2 like three different times, three or four different times <laughs> in 2018. Uh, so I'm pretty sure Deadpool uh, wins for 2018. Ryan Reynolds, yeah. Yep. Right on. No, no, so, no, don't th- you know? It's just, he's Deadpool. And he oh. his facade, his disguise is Ryan Reynolds. Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I sit corrected. Yeah. So what's what's the story? Isn't Hassan Minaj the guy who has Patriot Act on the uh, yes. On Netflix? Okay. Yes, correct. He what's his is, movie about? Uh, well, Homecoming King is a stand-up special. Ah, uh, um, okay. So, you know, on Netflix, you know kind of like how they did on well i guess they still technically do on comedy central the tv channel um but a lot of comedians are finding uh you know success on uh streaming services like netflix where they can record a comedy special and then they can just stream it and people can uh tune in and watch them a number Mm -hmm. of my 2018 entries were uh comedy specials that we would just put on and, uh, you know, have a laugh. And uh, uh, I, you know, I just saw it pop up and I watched the trailer and I was like, oh, this looks funny. I'll go ahead and watch it. And it was a very engaging special. Um, Mr. Minhaj grew up in Davis, California. And, um, you know, he basic it's basically a retelling of his life of like of wh- where he was born and what his family and his heritage and his background is like and how he got from Davis, California to basically becoming a, uh, a correspondent for, uh, the daily show on comedy central. And so because of all that comedic, uh, success, um, you know, I guess that, and the, probably the success of that special, he was able to do the, the Patriot act, uh, Netflix series, which, I haven't had an opportunity to watch, but I think I added it on my queue of stuff to watch. That's cool. I uh, I didn't know that uh, comedy specials like that were on Letterboxd, and I know I watched a few, so... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. of course, everyone... Uh, I mean, probably... Uh, well, I mean, probably, I would say, one of the biggest comedians to make use of this was uh, Adam Sandler, you know, because he would do all the Netflix movies that came out, and, you know... Uh, you know, critics being rough and, you know, being critics, uh, you know, sometimes his Netflix, uh, produced comedy movies, you know, maybe they weren't some of his best, like as far as like, if you compare it to like Waterboy, you compare it to Billy Madison or Little Mm -hmm. Nicky or some of these other classics from the nineties. Um, but Adam Sandler had a really great comedy, like stand up special that he did called a hundred percent. Which okay. is which is a take or it's a jab kind of at Rotten Tomatoes since a lot of people reviewed some of his Netflix movies and maybe maybe gave it like negative scores, but it's a <laughs> uh, but it's a really it's a really great special. He uh, he plays guitar. Um, probably the two best songs in that whole special. Uh, it sounds very much like a Billy Joel. We didn't start the fire, but it's a song called Bar Mitzvah Boy. That's really good, and it's uh you know it's about you know a Jewish boy going through his bar mitzvah and growing up and becoming a man, uh, and then towards the end of the show he has a very very moving song that he wrote about his buddy his good friend comedic legend um, Chris Farley who of course mm-hmm. died when we were it was the late nineties you know so we would have been at least elementary school maybe on the cusp of going into junior high but. Um, yeah, Chris Farley was a really funny gentleman, and it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, he passed away from an overdose, uh, kind of like his heroes were, uh, like, you know, uh, like, uh, John Belushi, um, and stuff. I thought that Chris Farley was much older than Adam Sandler, but they were friends? They were comedy comedy friends? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, Chris Farley was on Saturday Night Live with Adam Sandler. He started at the same time as, like, David oh. Spade and stuff. Huh. And, um, yeah, no, uh, yo, so I would encourage you, watch that 100%, 100% uh, 
a hundred percent comedy special that Adam Sandler does. And I mean, I'm pretty sure I teared up when he got to that song. Um, and like, you know, it, Chris Farley's popularity, you know, post humus, um, is still just as strong today as it was when he was alive. Um, so yeah, no, uh, Chris, Chris Farley. I've, uh, I think I, I ended up getting quite a number of his movies. Uh, I, back in college, I did like, a uh, a Chris Farley movie dive and I ended up ordering a bunch of his movies. And so I have black sheep and Tommy boy and Beverly Hills, Ninja and almost heroes. Um, so yeah, no, he's, he's great, great comedic timing. Hmm. Good deal. Yeah. I'm looking for that 100% you were telling me about. I think it's Adam Sandler. Yeah, Adam 100% Sandler. 100% fresh. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. 100% fresh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's a great... Yeah, I think you and Elvia would like it. Um, there was also another comedy special I watched, too, that was pretty good. John Leguizamo did it. Latin History for Morons. That one sounds familiar. Yeah, I... Looks I, like I, a... Looks like one of my letterbox friends gave 100% fresh five stars. <laughs> yeah, I think that was me, probably. That is you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like one of my two letterbox friends. So, yeah. yeah, I think I got my dad to make an account, too, but he he's barely gone on there and, you know, added movies. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, who knows? Now, you know, you know, I'm sure retirement will be coming in a couple of years and maybe dad will have a bunch of free time on his hands and maybe he'll become a letter letterboxed uh, aficionado yet. Hmm. Man, he'll just go on. Retired. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you're getting old. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I guess now it's just our topic of the day is just kind of general catch up, right? Not not yeah, general, so. not not catch up as in cats up, but we're right. just generally catching up and shooting the breeze with each other and seeing what's going on. Yeah, we we had some ideas like, uh, well, the Super Bowl was this Sunday, this past Sunday. Yeah, um, correct. Did not watch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we uh. Elvia likes to watch the Puppy Bowl, which is the Animal Planet special, um, where it's of course. Two, two teams of dogs, Team Rough versus Team Fluff, and uh, basically all they do is they put a bunch of dogs, put a bunch of puppies in like a little grassy thingy, give them a bunch of toys, and then let them loose it and run a commentary on it for a little bit. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to watch, but we don't have cable this year, and uh, my brother Mark wanted to watch the halftime show, so... We had him over, and we had our friend Curtis over, and we, um... You're beeping? Am I beeping? Hello? I'm here. Did I lose you? No, I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh. <laughs> Resetting the scene. So, I was talking about, uh, we had my brother and a friend over for a Super Bowl, and, um... Elio was saying that, uh, we're trying to you know, go out to eat less and cook more stuff. And she was like, well, we should get a grill so we can grill a bunch of meat and then have tacos for like a week, you know? Right. And I was like, well, let's do it. And so, um, I was resistant to the idea at first because I, you know, they weren't there a hundred bucks or so. And then I didn't know if we were going to like be in a house or an apartment next, but we were thinking maybe a house again. So, uh, anyway, so the long and short of the story is we got a grill and, um, it was kind of a crazy, crazy story because I like went to the hardware store and I and I bought the grill and then uh, we had Elvia's car, so I left it there and I had to come back and get my car and bring it there. And then it didn't fit in the car, so I had to like take it back inside and like disassemble it a little bit. And then it fit in the car, and then we finally made it home. So it was a big ordeal. But mm. um, all that to say is like we missed the first half of the Super Bowl because we were like cooking and stuff outside. But uh, right. Mark was in there watching some of it. And he watched the halftime show and. Um, I saw a little bits and pieces of it, but I didn't really watch very much of it at all. Um, and then it was like a super low scoring game. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Yeah. Everyone but, was uh, commenting on, uh, I think there was a funny tweet that went viral where someone said, uh, the teams are playing as if they know whoever wins has to go to the white house, I guess in reference to the big, <laughs> in reference to the big college game that happened recently and the winning team was invited to the white house for dinner but instead of yeah. like some sort of stately, you know, professionally prepared 
meal by the chef during the the quote unquote government shutdown. Uh, I guess the president ended up ordering a bunch of fast food and just let the football players go crazy with grabbing, you know, burgers and tacos and stuff like that. Yeah. So that was, that was a nice Saturday hanging out with our friends, but it was a little hectic. Uh, so was it on Saturday or I thought it was on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Yeah. I think all I did, well, Saturday we had Adina's birthday party with family and friends. So, Adina is now officially um, three, which is crazy to think. She's a three-year-old now. Um, Super smart and super awesome. Um, So, yeah, we were celebrating her birthday on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I went to Mass, and I think I played Fallout 76. And it took me, like, three tries to actually make a character and make it outside of the vault before, like, the game crashed or disconnected me from the server um but finally third time was a charm i got outside the vault and uh my little my little me started wandering the wastes of west virginia just trying to explore and make his little way in the world that's a bummer was the server is it does it rely on an external server or what why is it having trouble yeah uh, yeah yeah i think it runs on like uh game servers that i don't bethesda controls or Bethesda and Microsoft control or something, but mm-hmm. yeah, it was just, I tried to make a character two other times. Well, the first time we were getting ready to leave somewhere. And so I did like, I finished making my character, but I didn't make it outside the vault. So then when I restarted the game, it was like, Oh, you have to start all over again. So then I had to make that character. And then when I was done with that, I was trying to do something. And then it was like server disconnect. And I was like, no, no, so then the third time, oh, yeah, that's yeah, the third time came around, and uh, I had Casey actually uh, take hold of the controller and uh, sculpt my face so it would be as accurate as possible, so I could actually have an avatar of me running around the game. And uh, then it worked. I made it outside the vault, and then I set up my camp, and I've been, uh, you know, killing rad roaches and mole rats, and haven't run into any super mutants yet, but I've already ran into ghouls and the scorched which are unique to this game. That's the one where you, you showed a picture of it with the guy with the party hat, right? That's that was. <laughs> yes, yes, the one that yeah. I... Yeah, I yeah it has a photo mode in the game, and so I've already found uh, some funny little... I'll probably... I'll share pictures of them if I can... Uh, I think when I checked my email, Bethesda had sent me an email saying, okay, now your account's linked to this. So I think if I go to the website, I could maybe access the pictures i took in the game um but i found two little scenes of uh because sometimes you'll see it in the game where like whoever was there before leaves like a garden gnome like making it look like a garden gnome is peeing into a toilet or something uh (laughs) well i found a little scene where a jangles the moon monkey doll was practicing his golf swing on the edge of a of a riverbed so i took a picture of that or i went into a barn and I found a teddy bear with a hat riding a giddy up buttercup robotic rocking horse. And so I took a picture sure. of that too. So I'll, I'll try and share pictures of those in our show notes so people can see what I'm talking about. And they, as you explore the game, you unlock other frames and filters. And they have like a microtransaction store in the game called the Atom Store where you can pay money to get points. Or if you do challenges in the game, you'll unlock points and you can spend them on cosmetic things in the game or you can unlock other poses. So if you go to take a selfie in the game, you can have like a crazy pose or something. So, mm-hmm. but yep, huh. you know, so it's, uh, I know Heather was kind of, uh, you know, on our show last time was sharing her concerns, but I can see why she had them since I experienced a few of them, but otherwise the game has been pretty cool to play thus far. And while I've appreciated uh, the other games um, for having like a narrative story that you follow, but you can follow at your own pace. This one's truly like, okay, here's a loose framework of a quote unquote main story plot. But really it's just like, go explore the world. If you want to team up with people, uh, you can, or if you just want to be a jerk and launch nuclear bombs uh, across the map, then you can do that too. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, hmm. but going back to the Super Bowl, um, 
I heard the big news about the Super Bowl being um, because the gentleman who created SpongeBob passed away this past year. And so uh, after that had happened, there was a petition on change.org that went around to have the SpongeBob song Sweet Victory play at the halftime show. And, you know, it got uh, like over a million signatures and people were making uh, overtures like, oh, it's going to happen. Uh, and then the song played or like the first part of it played for like the intro part. And then that uh, Travis Scott, I think his name is, the rapper came out. Um, so after that, people were kind of like upset because they were like, oh, man, we were supposed to get sweet victory. And then we didn't actually get the song. Uh, but then I found uh, I found later a tweet from the Dallas Stars hockey team. And at one of their games, they actually played the song in its entirety. They edited the clip. So instead of them wearing red band uniforms, they changed it so they're all green band uniforms. So they match the colors of the Dallas Stars. But at their game, they actually played that entire clip in its entirety. And I was like, ah, yes, this is the Super Bowl halftime show I was looking for. And I think they even said that in their tweet. That's funny, because Mark was saying that they played a SpongeBob song, and we none of us had any idea why. So it was totally unknown to us that there was like a reason behind it. So that's interesting to know. Right. And the other big huh. uh, Super Bowl uh, funny thing that I observed uh, floating around social media is a picture of Miss Janet Jackson kind of having like a stern look on her face, and the caption of the meme was, her face when uh or her watching the super bowl and then she sees adam levine take off his shirt <laughs> which of course refers to back when we were kids uh when janet jackson performed at the super bowl and she had a quote unquote wardrobe malfunction and uh, ex- and uh broadcasted one of her nipples on national television and it caused a big uproar uh and so kind of interesting double standard uh, that I'm, you know, I'm sure, uh, people would bring up with like, oh, well, Adam, Adam Levine has nipples just like Janet Jackson, but because he's a man, he can be shirtless and it's no problem and stuff like that. I'm not advocating for women to be topless on television. We're not, uh, Brazil or some other foreign country like that, but <laughs> it's just kind of an interesting point that, uh, you know, that could be brought up, I suppose, of double standards in uh, broadcast television or live performance or something. Mm -hmm. If you have any opinion on it or, you know, maybe, maybe no one should be shirtless on television, no matter how good looking you are. I would say it only holds water as, as humor. Um, I don't think it's, I mean, if he's, Hmm. It's not. It's not something I would look for in a pop artist, and I would also say Adam Levine is not some a pop artist that I would look for. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's got I a great know. voice. I don't know anything about him. He's the guy really. from Maroon Five, except for that. Yeah. Sugar, so sweet. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's my little Adam yeah. Levine impression. Yeah, it sounds just like him. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. He was also in that um, Begin Again movie. Have you ever seen that one? I have not. Oh, it's so good. Keira Knight. Well, of course, my lady, Keira Knightley's in it. Um, but so is Mark Ruffalo. I think he'd like it. Is it a time travel movie or what? <laughs> no, not a time travel movie. Uh, James Corden's also in it, too. Um, it's a musical, pretty much. Basically, oh. it's a musical. It's not in the sense of a musical where people are doing choreographed dance, or say, but... Uh, Kira Knightley's character used to date Adam Levine's character, and then Adam Levine's character skyrockets to fame, and she's just like, oh, I'm just, I'm not good. And then Mark Ruffalo's like a washed up record executive, and he hears her original song in the bar, and he's like, we have to team up, I have to make your album. And so then it's a story of like her finding her, her, I don't know, her musical voice, her strength, her confidence. And it's also a story of this record, washed up record executive guy getting his life back in order, re-establishing a bond with his daughter and, you know, 
re- mending a relationship with his wife and stuff like that. It's a really good movie and super catchy songs and, uh, you know, just lots of musical talent all around. It's the same guy. Um, he did a, it's another Irish, it's an Irish musical movie, uh, was his first one, but the other big one that he did that came out after Begin Again was called Sing Street. Hmm. Which is, uh, that's another one you should watch where it's basically, it's uh, it's Dublin, Ireland in the 80s, and it's basically a boy band from an all-boys school. They're going through all the different phases of 80s music as they're making a band and stuff like that, and it's pretty good. A boy growing up in Dublin in the 1980s escapes his strange family life by starting a band to impress the mysterious girl that he likes. Exactly. Yep, that's Sing Street. Very dramatic. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So those cool. are those are two good ones. Um, yeah. Enough about Adam Levine and nipples, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got planned for uh, Valentine's Day next week or today? <laughs> right today. Today, as we release. Uh, well, probably watching some Critical Role with my wife because we like that mm-hmm. show. Um, I think we're taking it easy. You know, I think because of my birthday have already, you know, my birthday was Sunday and uh, on the 10th. So happy birthday to me. I'm 31. I'm an old man. And um, yeah, I think just the way things have fallen this year and just kind of fallen in general, we were just both like, ah, let's not really do a big thing of Valentine's Day. You know, we're already married. You know, we're locked down. We're good. Um <laughs> But, I mean, I did just buy her some dresses uh, for, you know, for the weekend. Uh, oh. Yeah, we went to, we came down to Houston and partied it up with my parents at the church gala uh, for the church. And so we had a lovely fancy pants time. And so she got some dresses. So I was like, happy Valentine's Day. All I right. just bought dresses for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yep. We, uh. I'll probably get some surprises delivered to uh, Elvia while she's at school because uh, she likes that. Don't and tell then, Elvia. Uh, Don't tell Elvia. Keep it a secret, guys. Yeah. So there's that, and then maybe on Saturday we might go down to Galveston, just kind of hang out a little bit, like go have dinner down there or something. Do you have a three day little... weekend? No, but I mean, like like a day trip, you know, like we'll okay. Yeah, we'll just like leave in the in the morning or afternoon and come back in the evening or something, just to get away for a little fun little fun time. We used to do that quite a lot. Not quite a lot, but we used to take little trips down to Galveston back when uh, back when I was in school and stuff and when she was first starting teaching. So it's a nice little getaway just to get out of the city for a little bit. So oh, yeah. I might do that. Yeah. I was going to say, usually it's uh, usually Valentine's Day is right on top of TMEA, which is the Texas Music Educators Association Convention, yeah. which is in San Antonio. and uh, Always is, always will be, forever and ever. Amen. So it is written, so it shall be done. Um, and uh, we just decided not to go this year, or Elvia decided not to go. Oh, um, man. Just to keep things simple. I was telling you earlier, because it's uh, her competition schedule this year is, is much tighter than usual. So right. she wants to not, she can't afford to like miss rehearsals uh, before her UIL competition uh, right. later this month. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, no, um, I've never been to TMEA, and, you know, I was a music major undergrad just like you, uh, and all my other mm-hmm. instrumental music ed buddies would all get fired up and be like, ah, TMEA, TMEA, and then they would all disappear, and then only, you know, a couple of us would still be hanging around the music building while everyone else had disappeared to TMEA, and we'd just be like, we're kings of the music school, woohoo, and uh, we would do, like, oh, no, we wouldn't, but... In my head, I like to imagine we could have done, you know, Breakfast Club montage, Tom Foley stuff, but uh, it was just probably like a nice chill time where I was like, oh, oh, okay, I guess everyone's gone. I'll play some video games or watch a movie or something. Uh, let me pause for a second. Elvia's calling me. One second. Okay. She's on the way home, so I gotta wrap it up. Oh man. So yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It is. It's getting late. It's almost time for my bedtime. You, you <laughs> grandpa. Yeah. I got to take the car into the shop tomorrow morning. Get that oil changed. Get that oil changed. 
Yeah. Well, and I know the other big thing at TMEA is uh, the Sinfonians uh, always do a step sing. And so I've never been able to go to that, too. But uh, lots of fellow fraternity music brothers from across the state of Texas will uh, sing songs and serenade all the ladies there. So if you're going to TMEA, you should probably go hang out at Step Sing and listen to the brothers of Phi Mu Alpha Sinfonia sing some awesome songs. I think I went a couple times. I remember once when I was uh, when I was in college, and I went to the to the Sinfonia uh, sing, and it was pretty cool because it's a bunch of guys, you know, like singing their little songs together and stuff. And right, they were always uh, when they do the sweetheart song. There's always like one or two guys who propose to their girlfriends like at that at the Sinfonia sing. Yep. So that's that was kind of cool, but. All right, I got to go to bed. I got to wrap it up. Okay. Uh, so, well, do we need to... I guess we have to do our ending spiel in our in our little intro. So, let's see. Ending spiel is where you start, Anson. Indeed. Be sure to check out our website, blanktape.show, for all of our episode tracks, links to all the topics we discussed, or to send us an email and get in touch. Yes, you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for at Blank Tape Show to stay up to date. You can find us on uh, the podcast through Overcast and Apple Podcasts or save our RSS feed directly to your podcast app of choice. And if you would like to contribute to the Blank Generation, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. And that's all. <laughs> yeah. That's all, folks. All right, Kurt. Until next time, I guess I'll be seeing you, or I will have seen you very soon. Yes, indeed. We'll go back to the future next time. <laughs> back to the future! <laughs>